Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel for another makeup mystery murder video. That's basically where I sit down, I talk about something true crime related and I do my makeup at the same time. So if you're really into true crime and really into makeup, I think you will enjoy, but that's just me. Today we're going to be doing another serial killer, woo. I do enjoy the serial killer ones. It's boiling today and the sun is in and out, so I'm sorry if the lighting is just off. Before I do start, I just want to give a little disclaimer. This video is made from a collection of sources that I have found on the internet. I mean absolutely no disrespect when I'm talking about anyone in this video and it is for educational purposes. Cool. Let us begin. Also, I should probably say, I always forget to say this, um, it's quite a nasty story. It involves murder and mutilation, so just a heads up. So before researching this, I had never heard of this case before. I'd never heard of this guy. And I honestly, like can't believe it because it's just the craziest story. He's basically a modern day Jack the Ripper. It was also kind of hard to research. I had to watch like a whole documentary on it because I just couldn't find any good like articles online. They were all kind of contradicting each other so like yeah. So William Lester Suff, he was also known as Bill Suff. He was born on the 20th of August 1950. For the purposes of today's video, I'm just going to refer to him as Bill, just because it's a bit easier. Bill would go on to become the Riverside Killer, or the Riverside Prostitute Killer. Bill was born in California, and in the 1960s, his family settled in Elsinore. Bill was actually the eldest of five children. His dad was an electrician and a part-time drummer, you know drums. Very versatile skill set there. When Bill was young his parents divorced and his dad left home. This was quite a key thing in Bill's life because he would go on to kind of play a leading role in the family. His dad wasn't there so he was the oldest, he was kind of expected to help out and be like the, the man of the house. Bill continued to live with his mother throughout his life but he would describe her as cold and unloving. Bill would constantly look for his mother's approval in everything but she just didn't care. She had absolutely no time for Bill. During his education at school, Bill was a pretty average student. He wasn't really that intelligent and he kind of struggled a lot throughout school. He was also like a little bit of a nerd, he was in the high school's marching band, he never really got told off at school and he was just kind of a loner and just pretty average. However, Bill was so desperate to be liked by his peers at school, it's like he was always looking for approval constantly throughout his life. He wanted to make friends, he wanted people to like him but he was just a reserved kid. I think the fact that he wanted approval from everyone just kind of stemmed from his mother like he constantly wanted approval from her so maybe it you know came from there. Bill completed 12 years of high school I don't know how it works in America uh, but we only have five years of high school so that's quite impressive to me but he completed 12 years of high school he received a high school diploma but he graduated at the bottom of his class so he got to graduate but you know, he was just a fairly average student. From what I gathered, Bill was like a nice enough kid. Apparently he helped out a lot in his area. He would like uh, babysit neighbors, kids. At one point, Bill was babysitting a kid called Eric Snyder and Bill showed Eric this book that he'd been writing and it was all about dogs that started killing humans and Eric was kind of like creeped out by this. It is a bit creepy and it is a bit weird to be showing to a kid, but it's not like, doesn't make someone like a, a serial killer. Lots of people have written books about dogs killing people, so like, just don't show it to a kid. Bill was a bit of an awkward teenager, like I said. He'd never really had a long-term girlfriend. I don't think he'd really ever had like a girlfriend at all. One day he met this girl called Terrell at a football game in California when she was 15. I presume he was 15 as well but he might have been a little bit older. They exchanged numbers and then they started dating. However, soon after they started dating, Bill actually moved to Texas as he joined the Air Force. Bill and Terrell still kept in contact with each other. They would constantly like write letters to each other, kept the relationship going. Sadly, Terrell rang Bill a few weeks later and she said they can't be together anymore because she had been raped and she was pregnant. Bill, however, said, it's fine, I'm gonna be here, I'll help you keep the baby, I'll look after the baby, we'll get married and I'll help you out. So they ended up getting married on the 13th of December, 1969, when Bill was on leave in the Air Force. After they got married, Bill went back to Texas and then Terrell ended up giving birth 
while Bill was, you know, in the Air Force. So soon after, Bill actually came home to California and I think their plan was that they were both gonna move to Texas or something, but Bill said that they couldn't do that anymore because he had told his superiors that the baby had died. Obviously, Terrell was really confused and upset about this, um, but they ended up giving the baby to um, Bill's mum and stepfather for them to look after. At some point, Bill was discharged from the Air Force. Um, there isn't anything that says why he was discharged, but we do know that he was discharged. Overall, his military career was underwhelming, and with his discharge, it just kind of seemed like one day he was there and the next he was not. After Bill came home from the Air Force, him and Terrell moved in together and they had far from a smooth marriage. It was terrible. Bill basically controlled Terrell completely. It was a very manipulating relationship. She wasn't even allowed to go outside of the house on her own. Like if she went grocery shopping or to the laundrette, she literally wasn't allowed to go out on her own. Like he went everywhere with her. It was very clear in the relationship, Bill was in charge. Bill worked at a variety of low paying jobs. He was a fry cook. He was a delivery truck driver, an ambulance aide, a parking lot attendant. He never could really hold down a job though. I, I genuinely think he just didn't want a job. At some point the couple a kitten and one night the kitten was just meowing really really loud and it was really annoying Bill and it just wouldn't stop meowing so he decided to shoot it with a BB gun and killed it. Soon Bill and Terrell ended up having their own baby together they had a baby boy called Billy. I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear me say Bill did not care about this child he could not care less. Bill was actually annoyed that Billy was taking up so much of Terrell's time like she had to look after the baby because you know babies are a lot of hard work and she would be looking after it and Bill didn't like this because if she was looking after the baby that meant less time that she had to give to him. He was annoyed how the baby would cry all the time and he used to slap the baby as well. Obviously when Bill would hit Billy Terrell would be like you can't do that and um, he would just turn his violence on her and just like abuse her. Oh, bad eyebrow day. Bad eyebrow you. So even though they had a very abusive relationship, the couple went on to have another child. They had a daughter called Dejeuner. Dejeuner. Dejeuner, I think that's how you say it. And basically, as soon as Terrell had this kid, she went back to work straight away. Like, literally, like, a month after she'd given birth. She was back at work all day, taking up all her time. And Bill was just a stay-at-home dad. In September 1973, Bill called Terrell at work and said something is wrong with the baby. Dejeuner was two months old at this point. Terrell literally rushed home from work to see what was wrong because Bill just wouldn't tell her. When Terrell got home, she went into the bedroom and saw the baby lying on the bed and she wasn't breathing. Terrell immediately called an ambulance because Bill obviously hadn't and when they arrived, they pronounced Dejeuny dead. Bill had beaten her until she had died. The abuse that she had endured was chronic physical abuse. Her liver had been ruptured by a fist blow to her stomach. How could you do this to your own kid? Like, the hell? Bill pretended to be upset, but he never cried. He never really showed any remorse either. Just like, he didn't care. So obviously Bill was arrested and he was charged with first degree murder, but his wife Terrell was also charged. Thankfully though, Terrell's conviction was later reversed. Bill was sentenced to 70 years in prison. End of story, goodbye, the end. Not, of course not, of course not. Bill ended up serving 10 years. 10 years. He was released on the 3rd of February 1984 on parole. Obviously him and Terrell had long since been divorced at this point. She wanted nothing to do with him, rightly so. He was 34 years old and he was in Texas. Bill decided that after his time in prison he wanted to relocate and he wanted to start his life afresh. So he decided to move to Riverside County in California. He literally started his life over as if he was an innocent man, as if he hadn't committed this horrible crimes. 
While he was in Riverside County, he was described as a friendly, mild-mannered man. He was happy to help in his community and people liked him. He had a variety of jobs at his time in Riverside City. Um, he was very happy to get involved with the community and he worked in a video shop for a while and he dated several women in the area. He was just like pretending to be this normal guy. One year, he even won the chili cook-off at the county employee's picnic. There's a rumor going around that he cut up people and put them in the chili, but this is fake. This is false news. He didn't do that. In 1980, Bill was 40 at this point. Um, he actually got married again. He married an 18 year old woman called Cheryl, who was a supermarket tendant person. <laughs> she wasn't a supermarket. She worked in a supermarket. Cheryl would soon discover Bill's dark side. Similar to his first wedding, he would be abusive and controlling and manipulative to Cheryl. The couple would go on to have a daughter together called Bridget Ann. However, this child was also taken to the authorities after suffering brain damage and other injuries from beatings. Bill and his new wife were investigated but never charged. Bill was kind of disturbed and was becoming a bit of a problem in the area. He was also really annoyed at how many prostitutes resided in the area. Bill did not like prostitutes. He said there was a problem and they all needed clearing up. He literally referred to the prostitutes as a plague upon the city, dirty and diseased. However, Bill was a bit of a hypocrite because he would actually pay for prostitute services. Like, he thought they were diseased and dirty but he had no issue paying for their services. His wife probably didn't know anything about this, but he would often come home at the early hours of the morning. I mean, maybe she did know, but she just wasn't going to say anything because he was like a crazy guy. On the 9th of October 1986, Bill was employed by Riverside County as a warehouse clerk. I'm pretty sure he stayed in this job until he was arrested. So in 1986, Bill decided he was going to take the prostitute matter into his own hands. So Bill overall ended up murdering quite a lot of women. It's like estimated he murdered between 13 to 22 women. So I, I'm not gonna talk about every single one, but I'll talk about the most important ones to the case. So in January, 1989, Bill attacked a prostitute called Rhonda Jetmore. She went to the police, but nothing happened. And then in June of the same year, a prostitute called Kimberly Little, who was 28 years old, she was found in the Cottonwood Canyon area and she had been strangled to death. And then in December of the same year, the body of Christina Leal, she was a 23 year old prostitute, her body was found in the Quail Valley area, she too had been strangled to death. So what made this kind of weird is their bodies were all put on display. They were either nude or half nude and their legs were like opened in a way to reveal themselves. I'm not sure if this is the case for these victims, but in some of Bill's victims, um, he put a light bulb up their vagina and he would stuff things down their throat once they were dead. On the 8th of February 1990, the body of Carol Lynn Miller was found in Highgrove. She had been found in an orange grove, or basically somewhere where oranges grow. She had been strangled to death and then stabbed several times in her chest. The creepiest thing about this murder was that at the crime scene, there was a partially eaten grapefruit next to her body. This literally just showed how much Bill did not care what he was doing. He literally killed her, ate a bit of a grapefruit, then dropped it next to her and left, like... This crazy guy. There was a worker at a industrial complex who found the body of 33 year old Cheryl Cocker by the bins. She had been brutally strangled and she was also revealed, like her body was put in a revealing way. This was on the 6th of November 1990. In this murder her body had also been slightly mutilated, her breast had been cut off and it had been thrown around 50 feet away from the body. In December of 1990 police were called to um, the back of a warehouse it was like a warehouse or a factory, um, specifically to the bin area again where the body of 27 year old Susan Sturfield was found. She had been strangled once again and her body put in a revealing manner. Her body was also found in very close proximity to the other murders that were, you know, near the warehouses. So police started to kind of suspect like a serial killer at this point. They were like, someone is going around and doing things to prostitutes. On the 26th of April 1991, 
the body of 24-year-old Sharif Hirsa was found in Riverside. Her body had been mutilated and again it was presented in a not very nice way to the police. She was just found in the dirt in like an open sort of like warehouse parking thing and she was deaf. At this point the police were getting pretty desperate. Eight people were dead now. On the 16th of August 1991, um, the body of Kelly Hammond was found in a place called Corona. This murder was kind of important because Kelly's friend had seen her be picked up in a silver van. So at this point the police knew something, they had a bit of a vehicle that they could look out for. Kelly's friend had also seen Bill so she was able to give a description of what he looked like. She described him as a white male, late 40s glasses. So like I said at this point Bill was working in a warehouse and while he was here it was his job to basically give out police equipment. Bill kind of had a close working relationship with the police and apparently Bill was constantly showing an interest in the case. One time a police officer was paged and then Bill just instantly said ooh have you found another body like it's like he wasn't even trying to cover up this like his excitement about it. So weird. The only women who had been killed so far were prostitutes and white women so the police were kind of building up a sort of like case file around Bill. I don't know why they did this but in the newspaper they published that the killer wasn't going after African American females. The next victim was 30 year old Catherine McDonald on the 13th of September 1991 and she was an African American lady. She had been stabbed so many times that she was almost decapitated. So in 1991 Bill had killed 11 women by now and there was no stopping him. I think he would not have stopped killing women until he was caught. He was not slowing down. The police didn't want any more people to be killed so they started sending out like investigators and detectives to hang out with the prostitutes and just make sure they were safe. They wanted to build like a good relationship with them. Oh no, I spilled glitter everywhere. Prostitutes were still working in these scary times because it was their job. Like, yes, there was a killer on the loose but they had bills to pay. They had like mouths to feed. On the 23rd of December 1991, 39-year-old Eleanor Casares, her body was found in an orange grove. So Eleanor had been strangled and again her body had been mutilated, her breast had been cut off and she was once again displayed. Like, Bill had created an MO for himself. He killed prostitutes, he strangled them, he would mutilate their bodies, he would cut their breasts off, he would display their bodies for the police. So Eleanor's body was studied and it was later discovered that her body was dumped in plain daylight. Eleanor's death actually provided a lot of evidence into who the killer was. Bill had actually reversed his car into the orange grove so the police were able to get tire prints. They knew what van he was driving and now they had the tire prints. Like this was really big evidence. Police soon knew what van they were looking for and they had a witness description so they were kind of on a good track. Soon the police ended up pulling over a van in the red light district. The van fit the witness description perfectly and the man inside also fit the witness descriptions. When police looked inside the van they found loads of blankets and rope and were like this is a bit suspicious. They arrested 41 year old Bill Suff on the 9th of January 1992. They got him. So when they first took Bill in for questioning he was described as very calm, very collected but as soon as the police said we know you were in the orange grove, he lost it. He said he didn't kill anyone, he was just there picking out oranges and then came over the dead body of Eleanor um, and there was a knife in her and he pulled it out and he freaked out and he left. He also remarked how he didn't cut her breast off even though this information hadn't been given to him. They were able to actually search Bill's house and inside there was a lot of damning evidence. They basically found loads of like trophies or souvenirs uh, from the victims including jewellery or bags. He even gave some of the jewellery to his wife. In 1995 his case was presented in court. He was charged with killing 13 victims but there could be potentially more. It is believed that he may have killed even up to 25 people. Throughout all of the case, Bill would continue to plead his innocence. He did not want to admit he was guilty. He even described himself in court as a caring, loving and helpful person. On the 26th of October 1995, Bill Suff was found guilty of 12 murders. The jury was unanimous and Bill was sentenced to death. However, 
Bill is still alive. He is currently in California in prison. He's 69 years old. There was an appeal for him in 2014 for Bill's sentence, but it was actually rejected. And he is currently alive, still on death row in California. And that's it. That's, that is the story. But yeah, that is the story of Bill Surf. It is a crazy story. He killed so many women and he just thought he was a good guy. Anyway, if there is any cases that you would like for me to cover, please leave them in the comment description down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!